where we now turn our attention <laughs> to the Jefferson County Commission President, Steve Stolifer. Steve, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I, am, I am well. You anticipated that introduction, did you, Steve? I did. I was waiting for it, and, and you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, you, you yes, must. Sir. You do you identify with Kevin McCarthy right now? I don't know. If, I don't know if I'll go that far, but uh, I, I like to think Congress is just a little bit more dysfunctional than we are. So uh, Claire Ath, um, uh, she and her husband moved, as I understand it, which created an opening for an additional commissioner on the Jefferson County Commission. Can you take the ball from there and run with it, Steve, and describe what's been going on since? Yes, um, Claire uh, resigned sent her resignation letter in um she's moving out of the county therefore she could not no longer be a county commissioner uh she sent the letter in on may 26th her last day was june 16th um we had 30 days from may 26th to uh interview and appoint a new county commissioner for that seat which is the charlestown district um we we did interviews um it was a a lock it was a 2-2 vote therefore per state code uh, that then goes to the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee. They are to present three names. Um, there's there's not a timeline on how long it takes. So they interviewed. Um, they um, appointed the the board appointed three or sent three names up to the commission, um, <clears throat> and we had 15 days to open up a vote to vote on them. Uh, the the one of the three names that did not happen. So now what will happen? Um, per state code, the county commissioner with the most seniority will take off one of the names, and then the next county commissioner with the most seniority will take off the second name, leaving the 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 third person with who would be our county commissioner. Our, <clears throat> so, um, uh, let me see. I got some dates written down here. So, <laughs> on August seventeenth, there was on the agenda for us to vote on one of the three names. Um, and two of the commissioners threatened to walk out of the rooms, therefore not allowing us to have a quorum. Um, they claimed that one of the names was not qualified, was, was not a qualified candidate. Uh, the only qualifications that you need is uh, it's pretty simple. You need to be a Republican 60 days prior to Claire Ath's resignation, and you have to live in Jefferson County. Um, you don't even have to live in the district to be appointed. They uh, so they threatened to walk out, claiming that uh, one of the like I said, one of the candidates were they were not qualified, um, which they were. Um, they wrote, they uh, brought up some issues about this one of our candidates having a conflict and couldn't serve. Uh, he, that was uh, Mr. Keith Lowry. It was one of the three names. He did get an ethics opinion in September, and. Uh, um, now we're ready. We feel like we're ready to go. Um, he cleared up any issues that thought might happen, um, and so far uh, we've had two meetings to uh, take this agenda item up. And uh, there was the two commissioners were no shows. That was on September twenty uh, first and September twenty eighth. So as I understand it, you and Tab are okay with uh, Mr. Lowry, who we've had on the show in the past, uh, and being appointed to this position, and Crowley and Jackson against. Well, it's it's not so much um, that that's the, that's the one of the three names that they are. Um, I mean, obviously, we haven't chosen any of the three names yet. Uh, yet we haven't voted yet. Mm-hmm. Um, um, certainly, I mean, I don't have an issue with any any of them. They're all Republicans. They're good conservative people. Um, yeah, so so we just need to take a, show up and take a vote. Um, and how that goes is, is we'll, obviously, we need a quorum to see how that goes. Have you reached out to Commissioners Crowley and Jackson to discover why they have not showed? Yeah, they're, they, they have made some. Uh, no, I have not. I have not. They, they they tend to govern via Facebook, uh, social media uh, outlets, um, and the, what what I'm understanding from reading some of their their social media posts, they do not want to show, show up. Uh, they will not show up if um, this agenda item is on our agenda to appoint somebody from the Charlestown district. Is there a code that compels them to attend the meeting? Uh, there's, uh, 
Well, obviously, they're not doing their they're not performing their constitutional duty for sure. Um, there's there, there's there's there is a code where they can be fined up to twenty up to twenty dollars per meeting that they miss. Um, but there's some things that would have to take place in circuit court to compel them to show. All right, former Berkeley um, County Commission President Bill Stubblefield. Yeah, right? Rob, going back to your last question, and the code could have changed, but a few years ago it was one meeting per quarter, all they had to attend. Uh, also, a little clarification, Steve, uh, the paper reports these are special meetings that Krauss and Jackson have not shown up, uh, not regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, is there confusion on this element as well? No, not at all. Um, they did not show up on September 21st, which was a regular scheduled meeting. Um, I went ahead and, and ran the exact same agenda the next Thursday, hoping they would show up so we could take care of some county business. There was a $50,000 grant that we had to had to vote on, or we were going to lose that. It had to be completed by the 29th of September. Uh, we were unable to meet. Um, we lost this a $50,000 grant. Um, it was for a courthouse. It was a courthouse security grant. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, sorry. Steve. So, and there is there is a provision in state code where um, it's very clear. Um, you the the chairman can call a meeting, and you need one other commissioner to uh, to agree. Um, they're they're trying to manipulate the code. Um, it's it's clear as day. Steve, this is John Gilstrap. <clears throat> it feels like there's a piece of the story that's missing that by skipping the meeting, uh, which I'm going to guess is, is a, an organized effort on their part between the two of them. Is there a candidate that they want that didn't get nominated? Is is that what's in play here? The, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. They, uh, uh, they certainly don't like the three that were submitted by the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee. And so, therefore, they're not going to show up and vote on them. Was there a debate over these names getting on the ballot, for lack of a better term? A, a debate uh, with who? Um, among the, the four um, council members, the, the names that were floated to, to replace the one who's missing, did the four of you debate that who who should be on this or was it a decision that was made um in a back room no the no the three the three names that were brought forward was that was done by the jefferson county uh republican executive committee um the the that committee um advertised the position for 30 days they then held interviews um after the interviews they voted and they they used the process to vote. It was an open open meeting. anybody could anybody could attend this. Um, it was basically a, a elimination process. Is, is how it's how it's done, and that's that's how the state GOP references. Uh, it's, I think it's called a runoff. Um, that's, that's how the state GOP uh, recommends you you vote on issues like this, and that's what we did. And there they was- did. As memory serves, there's a great deal of friction among the executive committee about who they would go forward with this, with a group of three. Uh, Steve, you mentioned that uh, the process was that uh, the executive committee gave you three names. You, as a uh, most senior member, could eliminate one. Then the next most senior member could eliminate another one. And then the third one would be the one that would go before the full commission to vote on. Did you ever get to that stage? Did you ever eliminate one of these three names? No, sir. We have not eliminated any of the names yet. And just to be clear, um, uh, Commissioner Tab is the most senior member. So she okay. she would eliminate the first name. Um, Commissioner Jackson and I are tied for seniority, and we, we would have to agree to eliminate the second name. And and by the way, my apologies to Jennifer Kraus. I think I said Crowley earlier when I was uh, mentioning names of the other commissioners, too. So I'm not sure how I did that, but she's been on the show a couple of times. Clearly, I know her name. But I'm old now, Bill, so I guess uh, <laughs> these things happen. Steve, so what's next for the Jefferson County Commission with your group of four in order to appoint a fifth member? Where are you on the progress of that? Well, we, we have a meeting um, tomorrow morning at 930. It's a regular scheduled meeting. Um, I guess we'll see if we have a quorum. Um, the very first item on the agenda is the point to appoint uh, a county commission 
and they're are from the Charlestown district. And they have said if that point is on the meeting agenda, they will not attend, correct? Yes, sir. Steve, if memory serves, if the county commission cannot resolve their appointment, uh, it automatically refers to the circuit court. Uh, at where in the process and what will drive you referring this to the circuit to make a decision? I I have not seen that in the code. Um, I don't know that there's any provisions past what we're doing right now. Um, I don't know if we can go. That's probably um, that's probably a question for our attorney general, or or perhaps or perhaps our secretary of state. I don't know. Um, is would be my answer. I, I haven't looked that fa- that that far. Yeah, I think there is a provision, even though I've been away from it for a while. So. Steve, does the person appointed, and I know the Republican Executive Committee comes up with names, so I would presume that those names are all Republicans, but does the person appointed have to be a Republican since Commissioner Ath was a Republican? Yes. The only two requirements are you need to be a Republican 60 days prior to Claire Ath's resignation, and you have to live in Jefferson County. I think you did mention that earlier in the uh, interview, so appreciate you repeating that. There is a comment from Alonzo Perry who says that since Jane Tab is a registered independent, she shouldn't have a say. Does that hold any water? No, not what, not, not whatsoever. You cannot just discount someone from voting because they're not registered. Uh, they, they're not a registered Republican on the board. And at what point did you say this will ultimately go to a circuit court judge to appoint a commissioner? Um, I think I think Bill uh, brought that up. I have not looked at I have not looked that part of the code up. Bill, yeah, I did bring it up, and that was my question. I believe that if it cannot be resolved at the circuit level at the uh, the uh, the uh, the commission level, it it's referred to the circuit clerk. Uh, circuit. Court, Do you know what rather. the timeline is? For I that? don't know the time. That was my question to Steve. What oh, is the timeline? What automatically kicks it up to the circuit? Uh, I and I don't know the answer to that. Have Commissioners Krause and Jackson articulated who they want to be in this position? They have not publicly said, no, sir. So this is just a, how does this end? It seems to me you can't really have a commission meeting and not have the new commissioner on on the agenda, right? So this just goes on and on and on? Um, until the courts get involved I, or, or something else. There's no, there's no, it doesn't seem that there's an immediate resolution to this. No, not, I don't see an immediate resolution right now. Steve, a while ago, much earlier, you, uh, when I think Rob asked you the question, how is this compared to what we're seeing on the U.S. House of Representatives, you said it's, uh, you're not there yet. Uh, some of your constituents that, I, that are very well respected in the community says that you are there, that you're more dysfunctional than what we're seeing on the U.S. House of Representatives. So I guess picking up on what John said, uh, what what can you do that you have not already done to try to get past this impasse that you're experiencing that's becoming known as kind of a an unfortunate joke? Yeah, it, it really is. Um, I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, right now, uh, this, if you look at the state code, it says we shall appoint a county commissioner from the Charlestown District. It doesn't say we can if we feel like it. Um, it says we shall. State code is very clear. Um, it, therefore, um, we are required by law to appoint this position. Um, uh, the commissioners that are not showing up are, are claiming that they're not going to show up if, in fact, that agenda item is, is – if it's on our agenda, they said they're not going to show up. So essentially what they're saying is, If I, as chairman of the board of the county commission, do not put that, if I break the law and and not seat the commissioner from Charlestown, then they'll show up. But I, you know, I took an oath and to follow the law, not to break it. Why not just show up and vote it down? I mean, if that's if that's their inclination, I don't get it. There's something here that just doesn't make sense. I. I agree. I mean, I mean, we have three names. If if you don't, I mean, obviously they raised uh, some issues with one of them. There's still two other folks. There's two. There's, there's still two other names. So it's. I agree with you. Hmm. 
So, Steve, what important stuff is, I know you said you missed out on a grant already, but what other important stuff is coming up that the Jefferson County Commission needs to pay attention to business-wise in the next couple of months? We know right now, um, you know, we have hired, there's several things. We've hired an attorney to review the TIF project for the Hilltop House. Um, we can't meet with that attorney to review this, the TIF district until we have a quorum. So that could potentially hold up the construction of the Hilltop House for however, who knows how long. Um, you know, this week we have uh, on the agenda to hire some new paramedics. We, we certainly need paramedics um, to run our ambulances. That's important. Um, but even more disturbing, we have uh, that if it doesn't, if we don't have a quorum is the first quarter of every uh, the first meeting of every quarter, excuse me, we have a probate agenda. It's a quarterly probate agenda to approve um, to allow states to close. And um, if we don't have a quorum to vote on that on Thursday, that will then prolong um, families to not be allowed to close their estates. Well, there's some important business that needs to be attended to. Um, Steve, uh, this is kind of off the topic here a moment, but obviously there was a transaction dealing with uh, some uh, water uh, ownership uh, that would uh, change hands. Uh, and I'm curious, was your wife involved in that transaction? I know we had her on the program previously talking about some concerns about ownership of uh, the water systems in Jefferson County, specifically Charlestown. Um, she was. Uh, she works for Charlestown Utilities. Um, the water transaction that you're talking about is, uh, I believe, American Water finally um, completed the purchase of Jefferson Utilities, mm -hmm. which is a private system. So um, she, I don't, I don't know, it's sort of sort of related, but not really. They're two different systems. Okay, I, I couldn't uh, remember or recall specifics of that one, but I saw that there was a transaction recently. Didn't know if it was related at all. Uh, any final yeah, questions for Steve? No, I uh, uh, I feel for you, uh, not just for you, but all the other commissioners. Uh, as the uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Mike Height, uh, text a second ago said, it's absolutely disgraceful. Uh, folks were elected to do a job. It's time to get off their duff and do the job, regardless of petty uh, difference in view. John. I just can't believe <clears throat> that there isn't going to have consequences at the ballot box. That um, not showing up is just not showing up. It's not take, even taking a stance. It's just not being there. I don't. I don't see how that works. Steve, final word is yours. Um, to your point about the ballot box, I agree with you. You know, one of our commissioners run, is running for a statewide office. He's running for state auditor. Good point. Steve Stolliford, thank you so much for your time this morning. Greatly appreciated. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Steve.